What's up guys, welcome to the video. Hey, in this one, we're gonna go back in time a couple months. This was last fall, kind of late fall time. Three different days of flying, uh, just kind of some random different stuff. We might jump around a little bit and just I'm just gonna show you some different parts of different days. All the days were kind of the same idea in mind, exploring new places, landing new places, and just enjoying the mountains before things got really cold and the snow came in and you know a lot of it's off limits now. But before we get into that, I want to show you guys a mod. The only main other mod you guys have seen here lately, of course, was the stole kit I uh, did up at the Badlands Stole Shop up at Clint's place, which I which I love, by the way. And I'm going to do an update on that later in the video. But one of the only other mods I did here a couple months back was some ignition upgrades. And I want to dive into that a little bit and kind of show you guys the deal. It's It's neat stuff. It's a cool product. And it can save you a lot of money if you just need to replace your ignition modules if you have a Rotex and maybe something's wrong with them. That wasn't the case for me. Uh, it's, it's an upgrade to the older boxes, but it is also a very viable, much cheaper replacement to the extremely overpriced Rotex CDI boxes. So I um, want to get into that and show you guys some of that and why I did it and some cool things about it. And, uh, and then we'll get into some flying. Let's do it. Okay, guys, I just wanted to do a quick little segment on this, probably stick this in the beginning of some other video. Um, what I've got here is I've got these Ignitec, I think is how you pronounce it, um, ignition boxes. This is a pretty affordable, these boxes. Allows me to get some more robust boxes in there. These, these um, factory units are, you know, they do quit sometimes. This engine is new, you know, new case, new cylinders, new pistons, you know, so on and so forth. But we reused a couple of little things. One of them was the ignition system. And I put all new wires on it and rebuilt that part of it. But the boxes are are older. Now, they, it didn't have a ton of hours uh, on that engine when I reused it. That's part of why I did that. So it's not like it's super old and tired or anything. But I kind of want to just get out ahead of it and get some better boxes. These, from what I understand, are very well made. They're more robust. Not only that, but they have another feature. They have several new features, but one of them is you can power these by 12 volts. I think it's probably this red wire. I'll look in the instructions, but they're, they're powered off the stator like the factory boxes, but they also can use a direct 12 volt input um, and run off the battery. And so it kind of gives you a little bit extra level of redundancy. From what I'm being told, they produce a stronger spark and they are tunable. So I've got my uh, cable and the software here to hook to the laptop, and you can tune in a smoother timing curve. You can add a soft start function, essentially, maybe even better than a regular soft start. It does give you a whole bunch of uh, cool features. You can even add a map sensor and then set up your timing curves based on load. I don't know if I'll do that or not, we'll see. But being able to have a little control over the timing curve is gonna help. The soft start's gonna be huge. Um, the 12 volt input's good, the newer, more robust boxes, stronger spark, and the probably the best feature overall is, and if you haven't noticed it yet looking at it, these have an extended harness where they plug into the factory stuff. It allows you to put these inside behind the firewall where they belong away from the heat and vibration. Okay, so here I am pulling the old boxes out. I got the new wires run through got a grommet on it and all that, got the boxes mounted inside. Um, I start trying to take this apart and I'm like, this isn't how this is supposed to be. There's some goofy stuff that somebody did and somebody put these hokey orange wires on here for grounds. I had smeared, the silicone is my doing. I smear silicone over wiring. It's something I've done for many, many years and had really good luck with. Anytime there's a place where there's a connection where a wire can bend off of like a point you know, where there's a connector, put some silicone on it, kind of spreads out that load and lets it bend over a longer period. So I had junked it all up with silicone, which makes it hard to work on, but I somehow missed that somebody had done all these hokey orange little tiny wires and then had a sheath and it was all grounded out. So I'm having to pee all this back because I got to double check that the new boxes are wired correctly. Um because it, things aren't really color-coded on these coils, so I gotta actually look at each coil, see which cylinders it goes to, match it with the right color wires. They give you a diagram. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, I got everything finally done. This ended up taking a lot longer than I thought. Just little weird stuff and 
wiring issues and stuff. But anyway, I got a switch here for the 12 volt input, which also allows me to program the boxes without it running. Super cool feature that has that. I'm in their software, nice piece of software, works great. Um, I played around with the timing curve a little bit to drop the timing at lower RPMs and start up an idle. A little bit more than they did, just tweaking it a little bit to get a feel for the software. Okay, so one final thing I wanted to mention because I didn't catch this right away and uh, I caught it before um, before too long, but uh, you know, before I ran it stuff, but the instructions they send you with the Ignitech are for a 912. They're not for a 914 and there's a difference. Um, the 914 has a different flywheel. It has different length lobes and it has different timing on the top cylinders versus the bottom. It's a goofy weird thing they did trying to negate detonation by starting the top cylinder, starting the burn on the top cylinders at 26 degrees, which is the same as a 912. And then the bottom ones are at 22, so they come in later. And that way it's more of a poof instead of a bang is how it was described. But anyway, the point I'm making is their instructions show you to run like the A or number one box. It runs top on one side, bottom on the other but you have to follow the instructions on the 914 ignition wiring layout in the heavy maintenance manual to make sure that the A box, the number one box, which is the blue and red coming up from the triggers, uh, needs to run the top cylinders all the way around. 55 degree oil temp, 55 CHTs. So that's temperature of the engine. I'm we'll cranking a little bit, let a little fuel build up before I bring in the ignition like I normally do. I'm just gonna use my same kind of tactic here. Still playing with the starting timing and how quick I'm ramping it back in but so far it idles down I would say it idles down 150 to 200 rpms lower just as smooth and maybe it's still smoother and incidentally I pull that magnetic plug every 50 hours ish and there's never anything on it I've, I, it's been it's like one of the cleanest ones I've ever seen so far you know knock on wood but uh so anyway, but I, I, you know, I it down like 1600. Well, now, you know, I could probably take it down to 1400 and it feels every bit as smooth, if not smoother with that reduced timing. Not saying I'm necessarily going to do that a lot, but at, at the very least, at least when I'm at 1600 letting it cool off, it's noticeably smoother. Runs real nice with that timing knocked down like it should be. So here I'm just looking for a place to land in this general area, checking the different hills and little valleys and different spots and trying to find something that works with the wind that day. Uh, this is actually nearby another spot that I've landed quite a few times, but the other spot is pretty treacherous. I've made a, actually made a video on it a while back about a sketchy takeoff leaving this particular other spot that's nearby. This would be a way to access that same piece of the river that's really beautiful, and it would require a little bit more of a hike, but that's okay, it'd be fun, it's a nice spot. And I was just hoping to find a, a little more open, longer, safer LZ that I could potentially bring a passenger at some point. Wind was blowing fairly good this day, so I really wanted to utilize wind really needed to. And the only line I found that had a semi-decently smooth surface was downhill, but I was able to make it work.
So I landed down behind that hill right here on the back side of that, going up that little ravine right there. You can see it's starting to snow now. And I think I'm gonna have to sprint back to the airplane because it's coming in pretty quick over here. It's not good. I was checking this spot up on this hill and on the back side of this hill right here for a better LZ to access a really pretty piece of river and some cool land. And it's it's got potential. There's several spots here it can land. None of them are perfect. Steep hill, it's wind dependent, a lot of things, but it's doable. But anyway, it's windy enough. And with this snow coming, I don't want to lose visibility. So I'm going to get out of here. Here's a spot you guys haven't seen for a while. This is a place I love to go. It's it's a tricky spot to land. Generally, the way the wind uh, comes down the mountain, you got to turn right at the end and land uphill because you got to kind of cut in through an open spot in the trees to get down and low enough, and then make a turn right as you're landing. But uh, cool little spot to stop and visit again. So I'm going to land over here real quick, and uh, we're going to talk to you guys about the Badlands Stole Kit. Give you a little update on that and my thoughts on the whole thing. I had some people ask, what did you do with the, the wingtip there on the Stole Kit? You know, I, I built the, I made some little aluminum... C's, you know, they're shaped kind of like a long C that fit on there. And uh, I ended up cutting them down a couple times. They were bigger. Some of the video you guys have seen, they were bigger. And it's funny because when you look at them from the outside, it's like, oh, it's still fairly pronounced. Really, there's not a lot of fence there. What do I think as far as the effect? Well, I think it's hard to test some of the stuff, you guys. But I think when they were bigger, those fences, they may have actually had a little bit more effect on flying slower, but it's almost like it flies faster with them cut down. Now we're talking very small amounts and numbers here, you know, mile an hour or so. The thing is, is these wings are slightly forward swept, which means if these get real big and pronounced, they're technically gonna be plowing air because they're forward swept. That means they're at an angle like this, not nearly that much, but there's a little bit of an angle and it's hard to shape that uh, to be streamlined. So I didn't want to take that chance. Again, the wings are, I mean, they're very little. It's hard to even see it, but they are, they are forward swept. Overall though, you guys, I gotta say, I'm super happy with this cuff. It performs fantastically. The thing is awesome. You know, uh, overall between adjusting the ailerons, playing with VGs, you know, and obviously the cuff is the main thing. I have picked up speed on the bottom and top, like hands down. After putting a lot of hours on it now since then, it's just there. Like I've been getting 100 to 105 indicated at real reasonable, you know, manifold pressure and fuel burn. And the aileron effectiveness is better because they've moved back to where they belong. The whole thing is just fantastic. I absolutely love it. So. I know a few of you guys have kind of mentioned things about it and I thought, you know, I should give a little update on the cuff and 
totally was worth doing. I'll just say that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this two-part video showing the IgniTech ignition upgrades and also a couple of spots in the mountains. My hope is that anyone in the Rotax world that wants to upgrade their ignition or replace you know, a bad unit uh, can benefit from this video. I also want to mention there's another great source for upgraded cheaper ignition boxes. Uh, a friend of mine named Mark Kyle sells a very impressive CDI box as well. Uh, they cost more than the IgniTech, but they're still quite a bit cheaper than the uh, factory stuff and definitely better. I can vouch for his craftsmanship and knowledge, and he's put a lot of effort into improving these boxes and all the shortcomings of the factory units. So I'm going to put the info for both IgniTech and Mark in the description below. If anyone is needing a box, you know, definitely check both those out. I want to say the next video we're going to get into why I'm switching to the Badlands Traveler after putting so much, you know, time, effort, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, money, etc. into the S7, really getting it dialed in. Uh, it's definitely been a popular question and comment on YouTube and other places, so I do want to make a video and we'll get into all that soon. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of the channel. If you are able to help support the channel, I could sure use it, you guys. Uh, here's my Patreon. And a huge thanks to my current Patreons. A lot of them have been providing support for some time now, and it really is the reason why I'm still able to keep making these videos, so I, I sure appreciate that. Anyway, take care, everybody, and uh, you know the deal. I'll see you on the next one.